Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own motorized camera slider, which can pan, rotate and track objects for some really cool shots. It can lift a mirrorless camera like the M50 vertically and works in any orientation, even upside down. Now that you've seen how it works, let's have a look at how to make one. One of the cheapest and easiest ways to make sliding rigs is to use aluminium T-slot extrusions. These are widely used on 3D printers, laser cutters and other hobbyist CNC machines, so they're pretty inexpensive and come in a range of sizes and lengths. I picked out a 2040 extrusion and then a basic mount for the stepper motor, a sliding gantry, a belt tensioner and then a belt and pulley. I also picked up a ball joint camera mount so that I could position the camera at different angles. I'll put links to these components in the video description if you'd like to get your own. I then installed the components onto the extrusion, along with the two stepper motors which I salvaged from an old 3D printer. I designed and 3D printed a basic housing for the motor, as well as an adapter for the camera mount and some belt clamps. Next I needed some legs to stand the slider on. I also designed these along with a shoe for my tripod and then 3D printed them in black PLA to match the colour of the aluminium extrusion and the motor mount. We've now got the basic slider together with our two stepper motors, so we just need a way to get them moving. For this I'm going to use an Arduino Pro Mini to control two silent TMC2208 stepper motor drivers. We'll also need a way to input the parameters for each movement, so I added an OLED display and a rotary push button. I set up a basic layout of my components on a breadboard first. This was to test that I had made the right connections and that the components all work properly with the Arduino. I didn't bother with both stepper motor drivers, if I could get one working then the other one would too. I drew up the circuit and a PCB to mount the components onto. You don't have to use a PCB, you can leave your components mounted onto a breadboard, but a PCB makes a stronger and more reliable build, especially for something you're going to be moving around a lot. I got my PCBs made up by PCB Way. We literally had them made and shipped out to me in under 24 hours. It was quite impressive. They did send me the PCBs for this project for free, but you can order your own PCBs from them for just $5 for 10 basic two layer boards. They're really good quality and they have a couple of different color options as well, so you can really customize your projects. I then soldered the components onto the PCB. I used header pins for the display as I was planning on mounting it directly onto the case and having a short ribbon cable to the pins. I then sketched the PCB into my CAD model and designed a case to house it and to mount onto my slider. I 3D printed the case components using black PLA and a 15% infill. I installed the PCB into the case and made up a short power lead to a socket to mount onto the side. I put a switch onto the PCB to use if you'd like to, but I prefer just having it on when it's plugged in and off when it's not. The switch is useful if you're powering it from a battery pack or you've got it set up somewhere permanently. I mounted the case onto the slider, connected my motors to the PCB and then put the wires into some sleeving to keep it neat. 
With all that done, it was time to tackle the programming, which was a bit more of a project than I'd anticipated. Making the menus with these rotary push buttons is a really neat way to input information with a single device, but you'll end up having to do quite a lot of coding to make up for it. I got the pan and rotate functions working quite quickly, and then came to the object tracking. I simplistically, or rather stupidly, initially thought that this was easy. The camera moves from point A to point B and rotates a bit less than 120 degrees, so just divide up the movement and rotation and it'll work perfectly. Except that that's not how it works at all. In order for the camera to stay fixed on an object, it needs to move slowly in the beginning, quite quickly in the middle, and then slow down at the end again. There's a bit of trigonometry involved in getting the camera to follow the object properly. At least I now realised what I'd done wrong and could fix it. So after another few hours of coding it was finally working. The camera now works pretty well, staying fixed on the object from one side to the other. There is one limitation in that you need to know the pan distance and the distance of the object quite accurately, otherwise you land up slightly over or under rotating the camera. This isn't a major issue, but it does mean that it's difficult to keep the object exactly in the centre of the frame without getting a ruler out each time. I'll probably look at designing an interface to a Raspberry Pi in future, so that I can run TensorFlow and do real-time object tracking. This should give more reliable results without any measurements. Using the menu, you can also set it up to pan, rotate, or pan and rotate in combination. Within each function you can also adjust the direction and the speed of each movement for fast and slow shots. The TMC motor drivers were a great choice for this build, as they're really smooth and virtually silent so you barely notice them running. As always, let me know what you think of it in the comment section, and let me know what you'd do differently. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.